All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakaq Badash, the one honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson. This is going to be a lesson on um, Romans, the 10th chapter, and Romans, the 11th chapter. And I'm going to jump around through um, some of the verses within both of these chapters and show that. These things are only related to the Israelites, all right? And when you read these chapters anyway, Romans 10th chapter and Romans 11th chapter, the only nations that are actually mentioned by name are the Israelites. So it should be clear just from that, but for certain people, they need more convincing, all right? So here it is. This is Romans chapter 10 and verse 19. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy. By them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you now. I looked up that word, and I'm going to do it again right now, live. Well, not live, I'm going to do it right now, so you can all see. Right, when you go to that word jealousy, the word is paralizio, para or paralizo, right? And, it, and one of the definitions for this word is to provoke to jealousy or rivalry. But another word is to provoke to anger, right? Now... What I'm going to name this lesson and what I wrote for this lesson to be called was I will provoke you to anger by them that are no people. All right. And has that not happened? Has that not taken place? When you see our people, right? They don't class themselves as a people. If you ask them who they are, what's their nationality? They won't know. They'll say, I'm me. I'm just a human at the end of the day. Or they'll say, I'm a, I'm a Christian. But that's not a nationality. They don't know who they are. Right. Our people don't know who they are. But at the same time. They're proud, man. And they have these stupid looks on their face and try and pretend like if you tell them that they're an Israelite, that it's not getting through to their soul. But then at the same time, they can't just pretend like they never heard that because they'll go and laugh and try and mock you and tell all tell those other people, oh, some crazy person came. Oh, Chris, this happened. Oh, I saw some crazy this. Oh, someone told me that. Yeah. And it will be in their mind, man. And then when, a, when a celebrity or someone that's known to the world comes out and says something about that, then it's going to further ignite it in their mind that they heard this before that person heard it man before that person said it and they're going to know that they're a scoffer and they're going to know that they're a, they're a respecter of persons if they all of a sudden now want to try and believe it because somebody that's got some money said it man right does do, is this scripture not true that we're angered when we see these people oh, don't we see our apostles the apostles of great millstone continually say to hell with the two thirds it's about the elect they're, that's anger that's been stirred up by a people that are no people because these two thirds ain't classed as a nation, man. So this world don't view them as nothing. Romans chapter 10 and verse 19 again. But I, but did Israel not know? First Moses saith, I'll provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation will I anger you? Aren't they a foolish nation? Aren't the Israelites a foolish nation, man? Yes, they are. But let me jump up a bit. Romans chapter 10 and verse 16. But they have not all believed, excuse me, but they have not obeyed, the, but they not have not, but they have not all obeyed, Romans chapter 10 and verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who have believed our report, and that's from Isaiah 53rd chapter, verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world, but I say, did not Israel know, Right, but I say, does not Israel know? First Moses saith, I'll provoke you to jealousy by a by them that are no people. But really remember that when you look up the definition for that word, one of the definitions is anger, right? One of the definitions for that word is paralizo. Well, the actual word is paralizo, and one of the definitions is anger. And it's clear that he's talking about anger in this particular case. That are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you, right? But Isaiah, but Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked that ask not of me. But to Israel he saith, all day long have I stretched forth my hand to a disobedient and, and, and gainsaying people. Now that, that's where people try and come by and think that this somehow means that he's talking about everyone. But when you go to, when you go to, um, when you go to that part where it says, um, let me let me show it, man. I wrote it in my notes, man. When you go to Romans 10 and 20, right? It says, but Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. 
I was made manifest unto them that asked not for me. And when you go to that, that place where that's written, it's in Isaiah chapter 65, which let me go to it right now. Right, when you go to it, I'm going to go to it right now, man. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 1. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold, I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. And the Israelites, when we, when we was in captivity, it wasn't called by the Lord's name. But let's go to this. Let me show something. Right? Because when you go to that word nation, when you go to that word nation in the um, concordance, watch this, man. Just watch this. I'm going to show you something. Let me go to it. And I'm going to use that brother's um, website as well because it shows the thing in the Hebrew, man. Let's watch this. Right? This is the word nation in um, Isaiah 65 and 1. It says, Gawaya. And when you go to it, right? Let me see if I can get y'all to see that. Let me see. Right? When you go to it, right? Right there. Right there, man. It says Israel. You see? Right there, it says Israel. So I'm going to read what that says. You can pause it and see for yourself. It says, it says, um, Outline, nation, people, nation, people, usually of non-Hebrew people, of descendants of Abraham, of Israel. So it's referred to in, as Israelites in some cases. And in this particular case, it is referred to as Israelites. Because when you go back to where he's talking about this same thing, which is in Romans, the 10th chapter, right? After that scripture, when it's, after verse 21, it goes. So let me read it again. Romans chapter 10 and verse 20. What Isaiah is very bold and saith. I was found of them that saw me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. Now that's all of us. That's every single person that's calling himself a Hebrew Israelite today. We thought we was black, man. We thought we was Negroes. We thought we was colored. We thought we was Africans. We thought we was Ghanaians. We thought we was Jamaicans. We thought we was British, right? We wasn't searching out to be calling on Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. That's not what was happening. We was a valley of dry bones, man, that Yahweh put his spirit in. And raised up from being dirty, crusty bones, right? To gradually forming into Israelites. To gradually forming into Israelites. And the transformation is still even not complete, man. We've still got to be in a position where no one can try and disrespect us ever again in their whole life. Where they can't try and find a fault in us and say, Oh, but you, you people are talking about us, but look at how you treat each other. You're always going to get rid of any excuse that these people have got to not accept that we're Israelites, man. He's going to get rid of any excuse. Anything that they could possibly think about saying, Yahweh is going to get rid of all of that. Verse 21. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Now at the time when this was being wrote, there would have been people that knew that there was Israelites, yet they still weren't following after the things. But there would have been people that was, was living among heathen nations and then started realizing, hang on, I'm, a, I'm an Israelite too. This is for me as well. And in the time, now in the more modern time, We've all grew up like that. No one that's, I don't, I personally don't know of anyone that was born knowing that they were Israelite. I don't know of anyone that's an adult that was born knowing they were Israelite, man. Because Yahweh had done a great awakening to where now these Edomites are scared, man. Coming up to, coming up to brothers that are teaching, right? Saying, Deuteronomy what? I just, I'm, I'm just a man asking, Deuteronomy what? Right? Bugging out. Talking a whole bunch of wickedness, man. Now, after you go to Romans 10 and 21, it says, um, But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my my hand, my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people, because Israelites are wicked. And you can see the evidence of that now in the modern day too. There's Israelites out of that, they're being told they're Israelites, you're not black. You don't have to call yourself that anymore. You don't have to call yourself what your oppressor called you. And they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that, man, because they're just happy to fit into black, which is a no people. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1, because after all of this is said, and people are trying, will try and use this to try and think that they can slide a heathen in there. After all of that is said, what does it say? Romans chapter 11 and verse 1, which gives you the understanding of what this means. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, have Yahweh cast away his people? Yahweh forbid, Yahweh forbid, for I am also an Israelite 
of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's saying, even though all these Israelites are disobedient and gainsaying, and that Yahweh stretched out his hands unto a disobedient people, and that the scripture said, that I will act, cause you to stir you to anger. He's basically saying that, didn't you know that he was going to be stirred up to anger? I told you that he was going to be stirred up to anger through my prophet Moses. I told you that I was going to stir you up to anger. I was going to stir up anger in you by a people that are no people, that they just are nothing, right? That's the Israelites. They just don't want to be anything, man. They just want to be thugs in the hood, right? They just want to be thugs in the hood with a Rizzler paper, right? Spilling up a spliff, man. They just want to be that with the long coats and the um ba ba the ba balaclava, balaclava, right? Balaclava, right? Or with a New York cap twist with a twist on that, right? They want to be that or with the dreads and then be shaking up and down, bobbing around, and you got the dreads drag dangling around their head like some damn curtains, right? They want to be like that, man. They don't want to be a people. They don't want to have a nationality. They don't want to have a moral code. They don't want to have a covenant with God. There are no people. But then there's also among these groups of Israel, among Israelites, a people that do want to be a people, the elect, which is what it's going to go into right now. Let me go to it. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. I say then, have Yahweh cast away his people? Yahweh forbid, for I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the image to the knee of who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And that was said back then. But you can say the same thing now. Even now at this present time, there's an election according to grace, right? There's a group of people that are going to not bow down a knee. They're not going to get corrupted and they're not going to get destroyed. And even if they do get beheaded for the word of the Lord, they're still going to get the kingdom. Because Yahweh can raise people back up from the dead. Yahweh can reincarnate a spirit through and bring it back again through another seed. He can do that, man. He can take a spirit back up to the heavens with him and bring it back down again when he makes another baby be born on the earth easily with it. that's nothing for the lord verse six and if by grace then it is no more of works otherwise grace is no more grace but if it be of works then it is no more grace otherwise work is no more work what then israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded so the reason why these israelites stir, are going to stir up other israelites to anger when they hear the word but they can't receive it, it's because they've been blinded. And that's what this is saying, man. Right? That's what he's saying. Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Because they've been blinded, man. Now let me go to verse 13. Romans chapter 11 and verse 13. For I speak unto you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine own office. See? That means that heathens are going to make it. Yeah, okay. Let's see if that's true. Verse 14. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Right? Who's Paul's flesh? Let's get it. Right? Let's get it, man. This is Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from my mashayak, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Now, that's who Paul's flesh are, the Israelites. And you have to understand as well that originally, when the Bible was written, there was no such thing as chapter and verse. That came in later to make it easier to find specific verses that you want to find. So when you would have read this at the time that this was wrote, there wouldn't have been no old chapter nine, but old chapter nine says this. Oh, but then Romans 11 says that. But then Romans, no, there wouldn't have been no chapters. There would have been the letter to the Romans. And it would have had a continual stream where you would have understood that this is not got no chapters in there. If you took out all the numbers from your Bible, a lot of you Christians wouldn't even be trying to make out like it's all of a sudden talking about heathens because you try and think that this thing's written to where you can say, oh, but 
that said it in chapter 9, but then he changed his mind later. In a, no, there wasn't no chapters. It would have just all been written in one big letter, man. It would have been written in one big letter to the Israelites scattered in Rome, which it clearly says that he, that Paul clearly said that he's trying to save some of his flesh, right? And when you go to that word emulation, when you go to that word emulation, man, I believe it's the same exact word again, right? I believe it's the same exact word again, but let me see. I believe it's that same word, paralizo, or whatever, however you say it, man. Which would be that I might stir up anger or jealousy. And it would be obvious that in that case, then, that it would be trying to stir up jealousy among another Israelite. That's that's among the Gentiles, because he's going to hear about these people getting these things. And he's going to be like, hang on. But that sounds like something I should be getting. Let's get it. Yep, the same word. Let me show Let me show that I'm in Romans 11th chapter first. Here you go. Romans 11th chapter, right? And now, let me go to that word, man. Let me show that that's the word in there. Right, there you go. If you can see. That's the word in there, man. Paralizo. Right, that's the word. So, when you read it, right, it would be like this, man. It would be like you're saying this. For I speak unto you Gentiles in as, mu in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office, if by means that I might provoke to jealousy, right, to jealousy, but it says that emulation, but the word you could put in the word jealousy as well, because that's one of the definitions, that I might provoke to jealousy or to anger, then which are my flesh, I might save some of them, because it's anger, anger gets things done, man, and jealousy can make you be like righteous envy, man. Righteous jealousy. To where you're like, man, I want the kingdom too. So I'm going to try and strive to get the kingdom. And that's why among the Hebrew Israelites, you'll see people that don't look like anyone that's on the 12 tribe side. You'll see people that are from Ethiopia. you see people that are from Eritrea. you see people that look Irish. you see people that are Kurdish. you see people that look like they're, they're, look like Hamites. You'll see different people, man. And when it's when it's all said and done, you're going to see even more people than that, than that. You're going to see people that well in in the Philippines, there's loads of people that look Philip straight up Filipino, man, and they're saying the same name as us, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, and those people are Israelites. Whether they are the elect or not, is of the Lord to know that. Just like how it's whether if we're the people that are on the twelve tribe sign are of the elect or not too, but they've been stirred up to jealousy or they've been stirred up to anger because they're like, man, that kingdom thing sounds like it's for me. So they're trying to believe in the Lord too, in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. They believe in the exact same doctrine too. Because they've been stirred up to jealousy, man. They've been stirred up and they're like, man, this seems like it's something for me. I believe in this too. And them, them seeing the 12 tribe sign and seeing that they're not on there, they might have said, you know what, but I'm not on the 12 tribe sign. But they might have been like, but I still believe it though. And then they would have eventually heard that it's not about your skin colour and it's not about your image. It's about your lineage. And we go back to Jacob and they go back to Jacob. And there's many other people out there that they also go back to Jacob and they're going to look like different nations. And let me prove that. Because this thing is a race thing. Let's make no mistake about that. But it's not a colour thing though. Right? It's a nationality thing. If you're not of the seed of Jacob, you ain't getting the kingdom. You ain't getting the covenant. You ain't getting it, man. No matter what you do. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. And after this I beheld and lo... A great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now let's look at that. Let me show you that, in fact. But when you go to that scripture, the, the word is um, Strong's G5443. Strong's G5443. And that's the word that's used for, is it kindred? Yeah, that's the word that's used for kindred. Right, and it, here, here's the definition here, Michel. And it says, um, in the New Testament, all persons descending from one of the 12 tribes of the patriarch Jacob. Right, and here's the thing though. That's the exact same word used for the word tribe in Revelation 7. Revelation 7 and 8. Revelation 7 and 7, 7 and 6, 7 and 5, 7 and 4. It's the same word used. So you people ain't got no hope to be trying to sneak off and think you're going to make this kingdom and these covenants be for anybody else, man. Because even Paul was not with that, right? 
Now, when you go to Romans the eleventh chapter as well, it speaks about it speaks about olive trees, right? But I'm not even going to go into that, man, because after all I speak about olive trees, is done over, is done away with, right? And you go to Romans chapter eleven and verse twenty five. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, that you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles do come in. And when you look up that word, you know what? Let me do it right now, man. Let me do it right now. Let me look up that word fullness because I'm sure it just goes into like the completion. But it's the completion of, it would be the completion of the ethnos. I'm pretty sure that word there would probably be ethnos. But let's see. Let me see what the word, yeah, the word for, the word for, um, the word for Gentiles is ethnos in that chapter, man. The word for, there we go, the word for ethnos, I mean for Gentiles is ethnos in that chapter, which says a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus, a tribe, nation, a people group. So, of course, that people group is going to be the Israelites. And how do we know that? Because what does Romans 11 and 26 say? And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer that shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now what's that quote of where it's saying as it is written? That's from Isaiah 59th chapter, the 19th verse to the 21st verse. But you know what? Let's read it. May as well read it, man. Because that's what you don't get when you go to a Christian. You don't get the Bible getting opened up. You get a lot of them running their mouth, bumping their gums, and then they get the choir out. Then they start singing you into a lullaby. Get, get that tithes plate around a few times. They try and all talk like they think they're Martin Luther King, at Martin Lu Lucifer Coon out here. <laughs> yeah, they try and all talk like that, man. They try and talk like they're some like, stand-up comedian kind of way, man. They're jokers, man. And then they think they're doing something. But anyway, Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the spirit shall, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him and the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn away from transgression in Jacob. Saith Yahweh, as for me, this is my covenant with them. Saith Yahweh, my spirit that is upon me, but my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith Yahweh, from henceforth and forever. So once we get out of that covenant, the word ain't going to ever depart out of our mouths, man. It's just going to be with us. It's going to be with us forever because we're going to get that everlasting life. And what is that covenant in verse 27? Let me read it. Romans 11 and verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer that shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Right? But now, now, now I'm going to re read this, read the chapter that I started off with. Romans chapter 10 and verse 19 again. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I'll provoke you to jealousy or to anger by a people that are no people. And by a foolish nation will I anger you, right? Now, this is Romans chapter 11 and verse 20, 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. So every single Israelite ultimately is chosen, man. Ultimately, they're all chosen. But some of them are enemies for the gospel's sake. So that Yahweh can show that there's only one way that you have to be specific. And ultimately, so that he can show that salvation doesn't come from no man's skill. It comes because he's Yahweh, right? And he decides who's going to make it. Let me prove it. Romans chapter 8 and verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is Yahweh that justifieth. So there's going to be people that are of the elect that have done the same sins as Israelites. But the, the Israelite that's not of the elect, he's not making it. There could literally be exact two exact Israelites that look they're the same height, same weight, same age, you know, same, damn near exactly the same in every way, same job, right? Born two completely different places, done exactly the exactly the same different, exactly the same sins, 
But one is not of the elect and one is of the elect. The one of the elect, he's going to get it. And the one that's not of the elect, he's not going to get it. Right? And here's, 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 listen, listen to this, man. Listen to this. Let me carry on reading. Verse 29. For the gifts of, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times have passed, have not believed, have not believed God, yet now have obtained, but now obtain mercy through their unbelief. Because Jehovah had to make some Israelites be of the elect, obviously. Some had to be. Some had to be blinded, some had to not be blinded. So it's not of anyone that's of the elect's own skill that they believe in the Lord. It's not of them. There ain't nothing for them to boast in. And that's why you'll hear people that mention the elect, they'll say, hopefully I'm of the elect. Or they'll say, of the Apostle Gabar says this a lot, of the hopeful elect. And he's been teaching about the Lord longer than a lot of people that know that the Israelites have been ever in a life, man, including me. So... And that, and that goes for Apostle Tahar too, Apostle Arayamlab and Apostle Rakat. They've been teaching the Bible a very long time, man. So, and they still don't, are doubting whether they're of the elect or not. Most people would be like, I'm definitely of the elect if they had been teaching for that long. But let me carry on anyway. Romans chapter 11 and verse 31. Even so have these now, or even so these also now not believed that through your mercy, they may also obtain mercy. And how are they going to obtain mercy? Through us receiving mercy. Because they're going to be reincarnated through us. That's ultimately what's going to happen, man. Right? Verse 32. For God have concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. So ultimately, every single Israelite is going to receive mercy because really, Yahweh's like, well, none of y'all really did the thing that I said that you're supposed to do. All of you sinned. Doesn't the scripture say all have fallen short of the glory? So ultimately, every single Israelite has sinned. But guess what? Some are going to know the kingdom after death by pain. Some are going to receive the kingdom to everlasting shame and contempt. But some are going to receive it to everlasting life, man. But some are going to be like, in the kingdom, they're going to be like, damn, man, I was a wicked. Man. They're going to be continually getting that reminder, man, every single year that they got corrupted, man. They're going to remember that. They're going to remember that there was body body with Esau. Right? They're going to remember that there was scoffing. They're going to remember that they had 20 different accounts to scoff. And then they'd make conversations between their scoffing accounts to try and pretend like people are having a conversation and scoffing. You know, I know that there's Israelites out there that probably be doing that, man. I know. Israelites would go there, man. I, I believe Israelites would go there with doing that kind of stuff, personally. If, if I'm wrong, then Salaki, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. But I think that Israelites would go sneaky like that, man. Because they're from Jacob, too. They're supplanters too, man. But if they're not, then that's a good thing. And it's a lucky how about Shem Yahushai for saying that. But I believe that some Israelites are on that kind of stuff, man. Isaiah chapter, so lucky, Romans chapter 11 and verse 33. All the depth of the riches, both, all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out? Because that's a, a lot to go through. In order to show mercy on every single Israelite, man. To make some be of the two-third and some not be of the two-third to then lay it around anyway. Just give them all salvation. So you can continually show within them that it's ultimately about your mercy. It's not, you know what, let me get a scripture on that. Romans chapter 9 and verse 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And that goes for the Edomites and the Israelites. He didn't choose no Edomite, but it also goes within the Israelites, which is even where it goes to in Romans chapter 9 and verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken an effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. And why is that? Because some of Israel have received what they've been searching for, which is the truth on life and the truth of why they're in the position they're in. But the rest were blinded, right? The rest of the Israelites were blinded, man. Let me carry on in this. Romans chapter 11 and verse 32. For God have concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all because ultimately every single Israelite at once upon a time has sinned and gone off. How do we know that? Because every single Israelite needed Yahweh Shai to die for their sins. Every single one of us. Every single one. And we still need to have Yahweh Shai's blood to cover us for the sins that we do as well. Still. Verse 33. All the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, 
How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out? Because he could have just made made the kingdom straight away. He could have just made it be the kingdom straight away, man. But he doesn't like a false balance. So he doesn't want to give somebody something that's just beautiful without them seeing the complete opposite. But he that's his way that he's like that. He's like, Yahweh's like that. He doesn't like a false balance, man. So just how we've received a dirty, rotten life now, we're going to receive a beautiful kingdom forever. Verse 34. For who have for who have known the mind of the Lord or who have been his counsellor? Who? Nobody. We don't know why Yahweh did that. We ultimately don't know. Verse 35. Because he could have did it anyway, that he wanted to do it. Or who have first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. Who gives anything to the Lord? There's a scripture in Sirach, the 18th chapter, that says, He that liveth forever created all things in general. And that's true. Verse 36, in Romans chapter 11, verse 36, For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. And ultimately, I said all of that to say this, the Israelites are deliberately blinded to stir up other Israelites to anger, right, by a nation or by a people that are no people, right? The Israelites that are of the two-thirds are no people. They don't think that they're anything. They really just believe that they're nothing out here. They don't know what their nationality is. They don't care because they're still in that valley of dry bones state, man. Whereas the other Israelites are growing and getting them sinews and the flesh put upon them and turning into that spiritual army of the Lord, that heavenly army of the Lord. But they're all there, just still bone in that bone status, looking at looking at the growth, man. They don't understand what they're seeing. They can't really understand what they're seeing, man. They don't really know, and neither does the world know. But they're gonna know ultimately when they see Yahweh Shai show up, because that's the main thing, man. That Yahweh Shai shows up and brings us into the new covenant completely, so that we can keep the Lord and be perfect and live the perfect way, like how He lives the perfect way. And you know what? Let me get a scripture on that real quick. I ain't read this scripture for a long time, but I'm going to read it right now. I'm going to read two scriptures on that, in fact. This is Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, for which also we look for the Saviour, the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashayah, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Right? Able even to subdue all things unto himself. And that's what we're hoping for, man. To have all things subdued unto ourselves. And let me get another one. Because nobody, no Israelite really understands what we're going to look like until we see Yahweh Shai, man. And then when we see Yahweh Shai, we're going to really understand what Yahweh's plan was for the Israelites. And how he really has designed us to be immortals, man. Because we're, we're, the world ain't still an immortal yet. But when we see Yahweh Shai, that's going to be the first time witnessing what an immortal looks like. Right? When we see the angels too, because they don't die. When we see them, we're going to see what immortal things look like, man. But when we see Yahweh Shai, we're going to see what an immortal, what kind of state we're going to be like as an immortal. We're going to see. First John chapter 3 and verse 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of Yahweh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, who's the he? Yahweh Shai. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that's a further cut on all these people that think that we're not going to see the Lord. And that try and say that he's a spirit and all of that. No, he's not a spirit. He's a flesh. He had a flesh, man. Because how can you crucify a spirit? How can a, how can a spirit drink alcohol? How can a spirit be given birth to? How are you going to give birth to a spirit? And how are you going to circumcise a spirit? How is a spirit going to walk on water? How is a spirit going to be grabbed and put on a cross? How is a spirit going to have clothes and have a woman touch his clothes and then his clothes and, and then be healed of her, of her um, uncleanness? How are all these things going to happen? How is... Judas going to kiss a spirit on the cheek. Don't make no sense, does it? Because it's not true. Yahweh Shai existed in the flesh. 
I'm an endless in it. All praises to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rakakwadash. Double understanding of passes in the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Shalom.